Several years ago, I got to take the road trip of a lifetime for any baseball fan. Uh, when I got in a car in Boston, Massachusetts and drove from Boston to uh, Florida with Johnny Pesky and Dominic DiMaggio to visit Ted Williams when Ted was, uh, was dying. And uh, Bobby Doe was not able to join us because he was tending to uh, uh, his own wife back in uh, Oregon who herself was uh, dying at that point. And I had to do something when we got there to visit Ted. We spent three days visiting him. It was a great tonic for him, great tonic for all those old guys. They all became young again gradually as, uh, as we spent that time with him. And I said, I've got to do something to justify my presence among all this uh, greatness. So I did a quick little rewrite uh, in my head of a poem that I've been performing for years and years, ever since I was an undergraduate at, uh, at Stonehill College. Uh, and uh, I made it about the days in the late 40s and early 50s when those great Red Sox teams had Dominic DiMaggio batting leadoff and Johnny Pesky batting second and Ted Williams batting uh, third. And uh, I thought perhaps that was going to be the only time I'd ever recite it in Ted's living room with just the three of them sitting in front of me. And since then it's kind of taken on a life of its own and I've recited it all around the country and it just keeps going and going. So uh, if I could subject uh, Dom and Johnny and Ted to it, I'll, I'll subject you to it. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Red Sox nine that day. The score stood four to two with but one inning left to play. So when Stevens died on second and Tebbets did the same, a pallor read the features of the patrons of that game. A straggling few got up to go, leaving there the rest with the hope that springs eternal within the human breast. For they thought, if only Teddy could get a whack at that, they'd put even money now with Teddy at the bat. But Don preceded Teddy, and Pesky was on deck. The first of them was in a slump, the other was a wreck. So on that stricken multitude a death-like silence sat. For there seemed but little chance of Teddy's getting to the bat. But Dom let drive a single to the wonderment of all. And pesky of all people tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted and they saw what had occurred, there was Johnny safe on second and Dominic on third. Then from that gladdened multitude went up a joyous yell. It rumbled in the mountains and rattled in the dell. It struck upon the hillside and rebounded on the flat. For Teddy, Teddy ball game, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Teddy's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Teddy's bearing and a smile on Teddy's face. And when responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his hat. I'm making that part up. No stranger in the crowd could doubt twas Teddy at the bat. Ten thousand eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. Five thousand tons of plot as he wiped them on his shirt. Then, when the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip, defiance gleamed in Teddy's eye. A sneer curled Teddy's lip. And then the leather covered sphere. Came hurtling through the air. And Teddy stood a watching it in haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded sped. That ain't my style, said Teddy. Steer right one, the umpire said. From the benches, black with people, went up a muffled roar, like the beating of the storm waves on the stern and distant shore. Kill him! Kill the umpire! Someone shouted on the stand. And it's likely they'd have killed him, had not Teddy raised his hand. With a smile of Christian charity, great Teddy's visage shone. He stilled the rising tumult and bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more... The spheroid flew, and Teddy still ignored it. And the umpire said, Steroid two. Fraud cried the maddened thousands, and the echo answered, Fraud, fraud, fraud. But when scornful looked from Teddy, <gasps> and the audience was awed, they saw his face grow stern and cold. They saw his muscles strain, and they knew that Teddy wouldn't let that ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Teddy's lips. His teeth are clenched with hate. He pounds with cruel vengeance. He's backed upon the plate. <sighs> and now, the pitcher holds the ball. And now, 
he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Teddy's blow. Oh, somewhere in this land of ours, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, ha, ha, ha. And somewhere children shout. And they're going wild at Fenway Park, because Teddy hit one out. <laughs>